it's basically a one fish, big fish derby. And I'll let you kind of take it from there. But, you know, what, 40 some days long, weigh your one biggest fish. And yeah, it actually it runs over six weeks. Um, you have to be entered before the start date. Um, it's $35. Uh, the prizes this year will be divided up amongst the top 10. And we've added other prizes along the way. And there'll be some really unique proprietary stuff that comes out for the slam this year that nobody's seen before. I, I think people will really enjoy it. Um, you can weigh as many fish as you want through the period of six weeks. Your biggest fish always stays on the board. This year, we're giving away a 238 with a 400 Mercury for first place, a uh, 15 horse kicker, Lawrence Electronics. Uh, really cool boat. I mean, but let's face it, you're being handed, uh, you know, a hundred plus thousand dollars. It, uh, it's pretty simple. We ask you to follow, you know, state law. Um, obviously you have to be in it. You have to have a fishing license. Um, you know, we do have a sportsman clause, you know, you can't be out there mistreating each other or anything like that. But, uh, uh, I think it's going to be just another great event, something, uh, you know, and for guys that are coming from out of town, uh, Hopefully they enter both. I mean, what an opportunity to, to own a 622 and a 238 uh, on a $35 price. Well, it would be $70 for both of them. Uh, would be pretty darn exciting. Yeah. You don't have to be Al Linder or, I mean, this. It, there's a little bit of luck that goes into this, let's be honest. Let me tell you, it's a lot of luck. The stories that I could tell you about our past winners, I mean, we've literally had people that have fished for an hour and a half and won. We weigh in a lot of fish. I know we're going to weigh in a lot of fish this year. Um, we have a really unique thing going on with the live leaderboard this year. Um, you may weigh in a 27 uh, ranked fish and, and you may win a kick butt prize. Um, we've had sponsors step up and want to sponsor fish 100. Um, so it's not just this, this slam will not be just about catching the biggest fish. It'll also be about just catching fish for a lot of people and uh, being rewarded for it. So you can't predict. You just got to go right. and catch catch the best fish you can, and it, it, it lays out where it lays out. But a lot more people, you know, that realize, hey, I'm not some pro or I'm not a full-time guide. Like, I'm just going out there to have fun, which I think is important, and I think that'll be good with the, with the walleye slam because I think people really lose their perspective. Um, unfortunately, you know, again – not to be negative here, but realistically, you know, I'll have people that pull up at me in the parking lot and be like, hey, I'm fishing the brawl, and I'm sure they'll say it now, too. I'm fishing the Wally Slam, so I'm going to follow you around all day, dude, just so you know, because I'm not, I'm here. Or people that literally, I've had them cut me off to the point like, oh, my God, we are going to literally impact each other. Like, just do a hard turn because they see I have a few fish on. And they're like, well, I'm fishing I the brawl, bro. I'm fishing the brawl, man. And I'm like, dude, what, what are you doing? Well, first off, if I knew that – Following you would win me it. I'd have done it already, <laughs> number one. But uh, I, I hear what you're saying, and I know where you're going with it. Unfortunately, well, I, unfortunately uh, you know, I'd always use this rationale. If you go out in the public, you, you pick 10 people. You got seven really good ones. You got one that you don't want to know. You got one that belongs in prison, and you got one we're not even going to talk about. In the walleye world, <laughs> it, it, in the <laughs> Choosing my words wisely here, but in the walleye world, it's no different. Unfortunately, many people have realized over the years we have caught a lot of cheaters, and it's why uh, we will continue in the slam to lie detector the the leaders. Um, the random ones, obviously, we're not going to lie detector because it's completely random, and we don't have to worry about how they ended up there. But uh, we've seen it all. We've seen everything from loading fish to somebody else's fish to buying fish to stuffing fish to um and i don't want to go into a lot and you know a lot of these stories you, you're familiar with the world we actually found out some of the newer ways of cheating from other tournament circuits and things and i don't really want to go into how they're doing it because i'd be educating people on how to do it but cheating has gotten state-of-the-art anymore uh guys are smart about it unfortunately uh that's why we have to lie detector everybody and, and, um, and I don't want to be that guy, but I'm going to tell you something only to educate you. So really no ego in this one, but at least twice I've had what would have been the quote unquote winning fish you know, on a guide trip. Okay. So everyone that's out there, if you're entering, I don't care if it's the fall brawl, the wall, I slam, everyone in the boat must be in the derby because I had a group where literally the, one of the guys sat there and everyone's high five because we know you get, we had fish in the teens like scaled on the teens. Like, and that's not going to guarantee a win, 
but chances are you're going to be up there pretty good. I mean, a real 13 pounder, there just isn't that many of them. Is that fair? I mean, that's fair to say. Absolutely. So when you get one in the boat and you're down to a week or so less, I mean, again, crazy things can happen, but you're kind of like, Hey, we're, I'm feeling pretty good about this. And when everybody, but one guy is high-fiving in your boat, I've learned that that means that guy didn't sign up because I've had it <laughs> twice now. And a lot of people do question, why do we make sure everybody on the boat is in? Well, nobody would sign up if not just the captain. And then we wouldn't have any prize money. So it's not that we want to be mean about it. The reason that we have a date that you have to sign up by and why you have to be signed up by the event is just that reason. Uh, to generate big prizes and make this exciting for the people that were in it. If one out of six people signed up, there'd be one sixth of the prize money. So everybody, unfortunately, on the boat does have to be in. And it's a great point you made. And I'm glad you made it. And I've seen it over the years so many times where three guys go out and they're convinced everybody on the boat's in it. And they catch that fish. And the number three guy has to break it to their buddies that he didn't spend that 35 bucks to get in. And, uh, it's happened to you twice. It's happened to you twice. You wouldn't imagine how many times it's happened. So make sure you tell your friends if you're coming here fishing, get in and don't pretend because Mother Nature has karma. Leave us with one tip, maybe, that you think could give somebody, whether it's understanding a rule or the fishing end of it, so that if you know there's thousands of people that are going to get in both these uh, these derbies, that you, as the guy that's weighed every fish up until this point, feel like hey, people should know this. Well, we've touched base on a few things. First of all, make sure you and all your friends are signed up. Second of all, one of the things that I see that would be a tip wise, um, and I see it every year, care of the fish once you get it. If you really get a fish that you believe is on that board anywhere, or you just want to show off a good looking fish to your family in front of our walleye slam board, Get that fish buried in ice as soon as possible. Get the ice up in the gills. Uh, shut that fish's defense mechanism down right away. Um, people put live wells in boats to keep fish alive. They don't necessarily keep them put live wells in boats to keep them the heaviest possible. As you know this, when you drain your live well, it's amongst any other people, or you throw a fish in a cooler full of water and that fish is still alive, once you take the fish out and you drain that, that last three inches of water is full of slime. That's that fish trying to protect itself. It's excreting, excre uh, excreting it through its skin as a defense mechanism. You get that fish under ice and you shut that down, that stays in the fish. Liquid is weight. Weight tip. is how you win. So to stick it in a live well, drive around for six hours, you are losing weight every minute it goes by to put it in a cooler full of water while it's alive you are losing weight every hour that goes by my recommendation especially on a boat even if you don't do it with all your fish but you get that one winning fish have a bag of ice and a cooler there roll that fish upside down fill its gills with ice shut that fish's defense mechanism down so it keeps all the weight in that fish when you get to the shop we're of course going to clean the ice out of it we're going to make sure it's prepared for the scale and we're going to put it on but caring for that fish is really important because let's face it one ounce two ounce could be a fifty thousand dollar decision That's so for the cost of a bag of ice what's a bag of ice dollar fifty for fifty grand i'll carry one on my boat every single night that i'm fishing the, the walleye slam so that's my so, tip i like that tip now here's one question off of this that i was actually thinking about uh, in the last few years so let's say I have that fish. Is it legal for me to zip tie its mouth shut and then cut that when I take it to weigh in it? It is, but what most people don't realize is we clean the mouths out. So if your fish spits up a shad or a perch, you can't just stick it back in the mouth. We're going to pull it out of its mouth. If you're keeping it alive, it's not really caring for the fish anyway. It's going to throw up and it's going to blow it out its gills or it's going to be lodged in the mouth. So it is legal, but not really the way you want to take care of that fish. Like I said, the only reason you'd be zip tying it is because you're putting it in a live well and you don't want it to spit up. My suggestion is shut that fish down right away and it won't spit up. We don't throw up when we're dead. <laughs> um, if that makes There's sense. There's your tip. That, that tip right there could win somebody a new boat or two.